the ultimate problem is we're all Minnesotans, and as Minnesotans, we can't enunciate for any reason whatsoever. Like all, all of our give, give, given enough time, all our all our words are just going to become the same thing, and it'll just be like question more like that, and it's just going to get worse. This is Podcat, episode 47, Moved Fast and Broke Things, on Saturday, March 23rd, 2019. And now, in gray, this episode of Podcat is hosted by Brandon Johnson, Brian Mitchell, and Ryan Rampersad. This episode has shown notes at the nexus.tv slash pk47. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hello. It is the pod kit. We are back. It's been a little while, but I think it's still been like no more than a month or two. You're not not two months. Yeah. Right? When when was when was pod kit forty six? Uh twenty nine days ago. Oh, just in time. That's pretty perfect. We're still on schedule for being on schedule, I think, for the most part. I think. I mean it's pretty close, if not exactly the right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I, I, I do have to say, uh, as the person who caused this to be uh, offset by a week, um, but it, it couldn't have picked a better week to be offset um, because in the past seven days, a uh, whole bunch of Apple stuff has happened. A um, whole bunch. A whole, uh, the, you know, a gosh darn ton of it. Um, and uh, so with that, with that, we have kind of an exciting, uh, exciting episode to talk through. Yeah, and you know it's uh, it's it's actually really good because we're right in the middle of two Apple things. We just had all of these product releases, and then next time in a month from now, we'll talk about a month old Apple event. Hi. So uh, this is perfect. It'll be great. Yeah, so well, much Apple the, content. It's that time of the year. So um, let's let's discuss what happened here. Let's go chronologically. So. To start with, uh, on Monday, Apple updated some new iPads. Nice. Um, now there are four models. They returned with the iPad Airline, which is um, that 9.7 inch. Sorry, no, the 10.5 inch, what used to be the old iPad Pro. Um, and inter- interestingly enough, it has the smart connector. So th- what used to be kind of a pro feature will work on that. And it supports the first gen uh, Apple Pencil. Um, That's awesome. and, it runs, and it runs the A12 chip, and I think it costs, what was it, four ninety nine? dollars Yeah, yes. that sounds right. And then they also brought back the iPad Mini, also running an A12, which is that smaller screen size, and I think the first time it's seen an update in four years. So, nice, solid updates. And I think, does the iPad Mini support the Pencil, too? It does. I think, yeah, it does. So, But oddly enough, they both support the Gen 1 Pencil. And the uh, Logitech Crayon. <laughs> That's so funny. Of course, um, Logitech would make something called the Crayon. That's just the yes. most lo- like Apple makes a pencil. Logitech has a Crayon. <laughs> right, and 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 all all Logitech products feel like they're smeared in Crayon juice. Yep, that's yeah. fair. Crayon kind of mushy. <laughs> As I type on a Logitech. Logitech keyboard with a Logitech mouse. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> using my Logitech mouse right here. Yeah. Um, so, what do you, what do you guys think about these iPads? Uh, so, we we might not be in the market for um, like non pro iPads right now, but what do you guys think? Yeah, I've got essentially a. I've got the last version of the iPad Air previous to this one, so the iPad Air two, which is now about five years old, if I'm counting correctly. Um, but uh, it's still going strong. Of course, it doesn't work with the Apple Pencil. Um, but, uh, I, when, when the new pros came out in, when was that September, October, yeah, um, something I, like that. I was strongly considering, uh, getting one and then a bunch of stuff in my life changed and I, and I, and I stopped, uh, stopped considering that. Um, so I'm, I'm probably still not on the market for this because, um, the iPad is mostly a consumption device for me. Um, and I, I don't think that I necessarily, um, use the pencil but as soon as i finish saying that sentence an image pops into my head of all the math i've been doing at work these past couple days past couple weeks um and the idea of a pencil is actually super super enticing so 
um, maybe with the next revision of the pro, I'd probably be in the market. That said, this is this is a really compelling thing, I think, for um, people who have iPads like the Air 2 and older, I think in particular, um, because of that price point, that's kind of a return to what I, what I would consider like the original iPad price point in the sense that like people who bought an Air 2 or an, an original iPad Air uh, or even an older device probably remember 500 bucks being about the entry point for yep. for an iPad. And maybe for the past two years or so, they've looked at the pros and they're like, well, I don't really want to use my iPad for that purpose. I don't really consider myself somebody who's going to use the iPad for, uh, for work. Um, and that price point is way outside of what I would consider reasonable. I, I think there's probably a sizable number of people who who fit into that category. And with that said, I think this is probably a pretty solid way to bring those people back in to the, to the iPad as a product. Yeah, I think it's, um, I think it's interesting. What are, what are your thoughts, Brian? Uh, I think it's, it's, there's definitely a market for the cheaper iPads. And I think this definitely fills that. And it's nice that they're using modern CPUs as well, because they'll actually last quite a little bit longer than, you know, buying the old iPad Pro from a year or two ago, because that's still a two-year-old device, even though it's brand new for that user. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think Apple Pencil support is nice. It lets people use that when they otherwise would have had to pay a lot more in order to do so. Um, yeah, there's there are a lot of options now, which makes it a little bit difficult. But at the same time, I think each device has its own pretty unique space um, in absolutely terms of, you know there's the cheaper ipads the really small one and the kind of normal sized and then there's the ipad pro the smaller but still larger than any other ipad and then the really large one yeah so, so there's five I think, five tiers yeah. now there's mini ipad there's ipad air 11 pro and 12.9 pro <laughs> yes right. the disembodied laptop screen <laughs> yeah i forgot the old the the ipad from last fall too that's that's the the cheapest one too. So, I I think yeah I think it's a good lineup, and it's really weird that the mini is cheaper than the bigger one. Oh, it's so confusing. <laughs> yeah, well the the three hundred three three hundred twenty nine dollar one is running a chip from two years earlier. So yeah, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, my thoughts on this are um, I think it's good. I think it's kind of a bummer that um, it's not Gen 2 pencil because, like, we could have gotten rid of all those old pencils and the way it charged could have just stopped doing that. Uh, I kind of – I get it because it had to charge capacitively and they would have had to change the bodies and change all the tooling and change all the things. So I understand. Yeah. Um, the other thing that's a bummer is that they these all use Lightning and not Type C, which is a bummer. But again, I understand because then everybody who just upgrades would have had to uh, upgrade all their cables, and that might have been annoying. Um, as for buying one, I I almost could consider getting an iPad Mini sometime if I have to start traveling for work frequently. It might right. be nice to have a cellular Mini with a Fi card in it. I still have my Fi card from my most recent trip. And if I just needed to have like a little hotspot, uh, that mini could be the hotspot provider, and that could be kind of cool. I think part of it is it keeps compatibility with all of the existing accessories that are out there for because these are all existing uh, sized iPads, and so you can keep yeah. using these old ones that are out there that might be available for used or. It, at least a bunch of companies already make accessories for them. What so, accessories are there for iPads? Like, what are those things? The like covers, the keyboards, stuff like that. Okay, cases, keyboards. Screen protectors. Um, yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I have, I'm mixed about that. I, one of the things that I think a, a company should do is shepherd their lineup and, and, and guide people to get new products. Not too frequently, but don't encourage people to have things that are bad for more than too long. Right. Yeah. 
Well, okay. Uh, so, um, what's next? I was going to say, speaking of things that have been bad for too long. <laughs> uh, no, just kidding. Uh, IMAX are next, yeah. Yeah. So the iPads were Monday. IMAX came or announced Tuesday. Um, there, it's mainly a processor and graphics card bump. So they um, now have the same 2014 case design. So the the case design is a little. Um, little old at this point and i think there was some hope that the cases would be redesigned i certainly was hoping for that the same you know one inch bezels but other than that it's kind of the same imax but the um the imax now i think across the board have i should i should look it up to double check but at least the 27 inch has six core processors across most of the lineup and you can even get the and those are the eighth generation and then you can even get up to the ninth generation eight core processor in the twenty seven inch. Nice. It's pretty yeah, awesome. I'm st- still not it's interested an- in an iMac. Those are those are awful. It's a mix, but it's mostly i fives for the twenty seven inch, and the twenty one inch gets. Um, oh, they still sell a seventh gen core i five. That's a dual core, but they sell. Uh, eighth generation quad core or six core i3 or i5 um i think their ram is a little faster too so um a big thing about this is the imax still have plain little hard drives in the low-end models Mm -hmm. and then they get to fusion drive and then you you can upgrade to full solid state if you'd like but it's funny you mentioned that on hacker news there was a uh when you know when when this came out there was a, a thread about the the, the lineup that was refreshed here and people started noticing that oh well the cheapest model has a regular spinning hard drive and people right. were really spooked by that because you can imagine somebody just trying to buy one and and not understanding totally that they're going to have a horrible by far terrible experience with a regular spinning hard drive i mean you could buy a mac from five years ago with a solid state and it would be faster and many things than yeah their brand new computer Mm-hmm. Right, that's pretty bad. Uh, let's see here. I'm I'm just trying to customize one to get the most expensive. Um the <laughs> the 27 inch iMac can get a um, Radeon Pro Vega 48 nice. graphics card now. So and 64 gigs of memory. That's pretty good. I don't know if I could do that before, but yeah. So you can the the maxed out 27 inch is is quite close to the low end um, <clears throat> iMac Pro. Yeah, so and, I got up to yeah. uh, fifty two forty nine. Yeah, which is two forty nine more than that iMac Pro. Oh yeah. Um, so, uh, how do you feel about like our? You, do you feel like there's a lot of iMacs being purchased right now? I don't know. I, I mean, think it's it's been a lower and you know a lower volume computer, but I think there's a place um, upgrade podcast with jason snell and mike hurley um jason interviewed colleen uh, i forget her last name um who's the product manager of imac and oh that's cool um it was, it was a good interview i definitely recommend taking a listen um and she said you know a lot of the imacs are you know kind of partially on display so like a lot of shops and stores might use them um i think a lot of creative people who need a little more power or you know video editing and things where the imac pro is maybe too much too expensive yeah yeah i think there's definitely a place for it i was gonna say uh and ad agencies it's usually basically the default for a designer is to have a 27 inch imac because okay. it needs to be powerful enough to to run uh multiple creative suite apps uh mm-hmm. without skipping a beat um but really the 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 draw for it is the display for sure um and so the a 27 inch iMac usually has the right combination of like the the price is right so that a uh, small to mid tier agency for example can can buy them kind of at scale at, at volume for their designers um, but not so expensive or so extravagant that like um, it's it's going to be like outsized to what to what it would be used for. Um, so like usually that's that's kind of that's kind of where that fits. And actually, when I worked for an agency, like uh, as an engineer, my the first computer they issued to me was a designer's old uh, old iMac, 
and then uh, as an engineer, you have to have a laptop to move around. So uh, they uh, that that was corrected quickly. But like that, I think that's still pretty common. So I'm just looking here at the spec sheet, and you can get the most expensive SKU at twenty two ninety nine. It default comes with a fusion drive, and that is just shocking to me. I'd say it's yeah. better that that's a fusion and not just a standard. It's still it's awful. Make a lot of it faster, but yeah, it won't make it won't make a difference. It's still terrible. Um, and and I so I've been I've been looking for an iMac now for a while, um, even right. before my Hackintosh died, really. Um, but I bought this MacBook in the fall, so I'm kind of conflicted. Do I? Go with an iMac. I was kind of hoping for an updated case and, you know, solid state everywhere using the T2 chip. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love for, like, Face ID or Touch ID somewhere in this. Probably not Touch ID. That would be, it. you know, that'd need a new keyboard or something. But so I'm kind of conflicted for what I should do. Or should I just buy that LJ, LG 5K display and call it good? Yeah, I think so. I was I was looking forward to a Mac Mini this year. And those are out now. That's great. Uh, but then I thought, well, the one I would want is about 3500 anyway. So let's just wait for a Mac Pro to come out. You know, if it's between 3000 and 4000 why not just get that and move on? Because what, do I want to have a custom spec Mac Mini or do I just want a low-tier Mac Pro? And I would prefer the latter. Right. Yeah, and it's kind of the same for me for iMac Pro. Now, iMac Pro is a bit more expensive like quite you know a moderate amount more than i would like to spend you know just the baseline memory or the baseline model but you get that you know eight core processor still you get 32 gigs of ram and it's ecc which i really like you already get the solid the one terabyte solid right. state and you have a great graphics card and you know it's it's got the better cooling system so it's a little quieter and so that's enticing for me but at the same time i'm like i don't use i use my my laptop at my desk mostly for podcasting surfing the web you know editing podcasts some web development here and there it's not i feel like an imac pro is overkill for me yeah i, I don't know i mean i think you would probably use it more if it were more powerful yeah and i really i really liked having my hackintosh it was super fast and i felt like that thing screamed the entire for the entirety of, of its life ignoring stability and so yeah and you know just not having to deal with plugging in adapters all the time i want to use my desk that would be nice uh would, would you say that your uh hackintosh moved fast moved fast and broke things huh. uh yeah i'll show myself out i'll, I'll show i'll show myself <laughs> out i'm ban banning myself from the podcast i just i just uh saw an opportunity and had to uh, well take deserved. advantage so the, the last thing I'll say about the uh, IMAX is I refused to buy a, uh, a computer with a screen built in. That's it. Um, how about if we talk about uh, AirPods? Yeah. Yes. I'm really excited for this. Uh, so it seems like the AirPods that uh, – well, A, the second generation of AirPods have been kind of teased for a little while uh, in the media. Um, as I remember as recently as December, I was looking at getting AirPods as my Bluetooth headphones were kind of slowly dying. Um, my, uh, my like workout earbuds basically and commuting earbuds. Um, and, uh, I, I remember looking at the Mac rumors buying guide that was like, don't buy AirPods. Don't do it because it's, uh, you know, we're close to the end of a cycle and it's, and they're going to come out any moment now. They're saying first quarter, 2019, uh, January, 2019, likely, uh, January came and went. And uh, there were no AirPods. Uh, so February, I, w I walked into the Apple store in uptown, and I was like, hey, I'd like to buy some AirPods. And they were like, <laughs> good luck, buddy. We're all out. Um, and it was at that moment where I was like, oh, the, you know, there's really something to this. They're reducing stock because there's going to be a new AirPod release. Uh, another month and a half later, here we are, and they're finally out. So I remember the rumored changes were wireless charging, uh, and hey Siri without tapping on the on the earphones, and I know I know that the wireless charging part came to fruition. So the new AirPods are retailing for two about two hundred dollars uh, with a wireless charging case. Um, and if you want the kind of old style case with, that came with the, essentially similar to the one that came with the original AirPods, uh, that'll run you a one fifty nine. Um, but I don't remember whether the hey Siri component came with it. Yep they they use the new H one headphone chip. 
So I guess W1 for wireless, H1 for headphone. Uh, it makes That makes nice. sense. So the H1 chip is what supports Hey Siri. And um, it also, I think, lets you connect faster to devices and switch devices faster and um, one and a half or yeah, 1.5 times faster connection time for phone calls. And I think better power management when on phone calls, lower latency when gaming or you know anything it'll it'll be lower latency so the nice. so re- regardless if you buy the wireless charging case or not you'll get the new H1 based AirPods and the charging yeah. is you know is your standard Qi charger and i would assume air power when that comes out so yeah i'm yeah. and you can get them engraved now and that case has a <laughs> power indicator on the outside versus on the inside wait nice. you can get them in a different color no, you just get them uh, in- engraved, not in oh, gray. Oh, engraved. I th- I heard in gray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I'll, I'll, when when I ordered mine, I'm gonna I'm gonna write on them. Uh, I don't know something witty. But what it probably is is for people's names, right? That's that's got to be what it is because like everyone and their cousin has AirPods now. Um, well, so is the case just engraved, or the, is it the actual AirPod that's engraved? The, the case. Okay. Well. I mean, you can't have so everything. If you go to, so if you like go to a concert and they like make you leave your AirPods next to everybody else's AirPods for some reason, I don't know. That seems like a thing people would do. Um, uh, then, uh, then, then if if you have to dump the AirPods out of the case, there's no hope. You're just gonna have to pick two AirPods up and hope they're yours. <laughs> and then you get the Gen One version. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, you you get like a left a left two left earbuds or something like that. No. It's like oh no. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. So, Brendan, you're gonna you're gonna get a set of these? Uh probably. Yeah, I mean, I have I have the uh, Apple Store view on the on the on my on my phone open right now to it. But as I do that, I also notice that there's a there's a screen crack in the upper left hand corner of my phone. My ba- oh, my no. battery case is disintegrating. It looks terrible. I saw it last week. It it looks really awful, and it only it's only getting worse. So I'm wondering if maybe I should uh, refocus on upgrading the phone first, um, but we're like three quarters of the way through the cycle now, so I have to I have to wait for the iPhone t- 10Z, <laughs> iPhone iPhone X X's <laughs> X X S S X, X, X's yeah yeah cross site scripting that's what it is <laughs> um, the iPhone cross site scripting yeah but you know I, I'll probably just yeah, who knows? I'll, I'll either order them right now and immediately regret it until they show up and when I won't regret it at all. Or uh, I'll swap to using a case that's not disintegrating uh, but doesn't have a battery in it and slowly get tired of having to charge my phone twice a day. <laughs> um, and, and we'll see that we'll see from there. But uh, I, I'm really glad that they have the option to buy it without the wireless case because I don't see a future where I'm going to use wireless charging anytime soon. Um but, no, I said the same thing, but it's surprisingly nice. Yeah, well, I guess so. We, you can use any sort of like Qi charging board, right? It, yep. I, I can't. I don't have to wait for air power. Correct. Yep. Right. Okay. Well, I guess I just buy the Logitech Cran uh, <laughs> Qi charger, and and, uh, and that, also that in work. theory, in theory, the next iPhones will also have the same gimmick everybody else already has, which is reverse charging. So in theory, oh. you'll be able to put on your new iPhone, of course, the the little Air AirPod case, and it will reverse charge to it. Yeah, but in what circumstance would I ever want to reduce my phone's battery capacity to charge my headphones? That just seems ludicrous you, to me. When you have your music on your Apple Watch and you need to listen to music and you don't care about your phone anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's, Suck the life that's... out of it. That's true. That's true. Well, and the, so the other thing too, and I guess maybe this will this will help a little bit, is that my car has a lightning cable. Well, not built in, but I have a lightning cable for my car, so I can use CarPlay. And um, as a result, like the the my phone's like discharging a lot less frequently now because you know when I drive in, it gets charged fully back up to one hundred percent, and when I drive home, it gets fully charged back up to one hundred percent. So that's kind of nice, but so maybe 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 all this is null. AirPods were the like single best 
purchase of 2016 or 17. I don't know that, that whole time period. What yeah. they're so fantastic. I even, you know, going just how fast they connect to your device. It's so hands-free. It's so easy. And, um, I would certainly recommend it for you. All right. Uh, especially wow. if you're going to wait for an iPhone. Uh, yeah. Treat yourself now. Get yourself through the summer. You That's can, fair. That's you can last fair. Yeah. Till the fall with AirPods. I'm debating it. I probably won't right away. Um, I have you know the first gen from way when they be, when they were first released. Um, yeah. Now that it's getting warmer out, they actually last a little longer when I'm outside. Hot. You know, in the middle I of the bet. winter, I would walk a block and they would die. Um, nowadays, I can wear them. You know, when it's like 40s and 50s, I can wear them for an hour and they'll be fine. But not much more than an hour, they'll die. Or maybe gotcha. even like 45 minutes now. And if I'm on the phone call or something, it's even worse. So, yeah, I think I can get a few more months out of them. But they are slowly, slowly losing their charge. Gotcha. But they do charge fast, too. So, I, you know, is the case still holds a charge pretty well. Because I haven't charged that as many times as I've charged the headphones that sit inside the case. So, Right on. I don't know. Maybe this summer. We'll see. So I am gotcha. not getting any AirPods because I don't uh, have an iPhone. Um, but incidentally, I did order my S10 Plus in pre-order mode. So I will be getting the Galaxy Buds. Ooh. And those apparently are the same kind of thing. They pair to the phone and do cool stuff. Nice. And I can talk to Bixby all day long. Bixby. <laughs> nope. Everyone's favorite. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> um, and so we do indeed. have some additional news uh, in the Apple category to finish up here with. Uh, yep. As I mentioned earlier, next week on Monday, is that, is that right? Tuesday? Tuesday? Yeah, Monday. A couple Monday. days from now. On Monday, there will be a, a media event. So it's not going to be about devices, most likely. It's mostly going to focus around... Um, services Eddie Q. It's going to be the Eddie Q show. It's it's going to be about their new streaming service, which will be uh, available uh, th- presumably through Apple TV and whatever random TVs just happen to have it installed on it. I guess. Yeah, they pushed uh-huh. out um, more TVs supporting AirPlay Two and iTunes Movies, which makes you think, oh, and their new service. So, and yeah, and this new service now, according to the Wall Street Journal. Uh, Apple wants to keep 50% of the subscription revenue from its $10 a month Netflix for news service, which is uh, a lot. So yeah. I'm, I'm, there's going to be some really high quality news uh, on that service. And so, um, you know, yeah, great. So we'll, we will see all, all about what happens on Monday. I'll definitely bring my Stratcom brain to discuss that after after we're done because I think there's going to be some interesting dynamics, as Ryan said. Yeah, it's uh, it's always a tough thing when you, when you um, when you give up your own distribution uh, channel in exchange for presumably what allegedly has been marketed as a big audience, right? Uh, and then what happens to your quality in return? Well, maybe it's not so good, right? So we'll find out. Uh, and then in addition to that, um, not not too soon before that news came out about the event, we also found out when the WWDC event will be. And that will be on the uh, – it's loading uh, June 3rd through 7th. So put happy that on the calendar. Happy birthday to me. Oh, well, happy birthday then. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> – so if you, if you go to the um, WWDC page here that I linked, if you look at the little robot guy, I mean it looks pretty much like you, Brandon. Hey. You're so right. It, that, that's a little alarming, actually. Why did they? Why did they? Who who allowed them to use my likeness? I don't know. I think I, I think I did actually. I think when I signed on the Apple Developer Program, they're like, we oh. can use your likeness to promote WWDC. Yeah, no, I'm pretty that's sure that's real. true. Mm. I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm pretty sure that's how law works. It is. That is how it works. So. Um, uh well we we will save our WWDC speculation for another episode. Yeah. Um but that is coming so get ready for it. I mean we don't have too many more episodes until WWDC. We might get an April episode and it may episode in. So 
you know, we have to do it in the next couple of months. Definitely. Yeah, I guess all I'll say is AR kit. I hope <laughs> I, I know exactly what I want from AR kit. <laughs> That's for sure. But who knows whether it'll happen? Yeah, I think the big thing this summer will be Marzipan and the conversions of Mac OS and iOS and their tooling development processes and um, shared libraries. Yep. Totally. I do I hope that, that if, if there's one thing that would get me to WWDC, like physically there, it would be um, if they actually <laughs> gave out marzipan to people who attended the marzipan talks because well, like <laughs> sweetened almond candy is like the best thing in the universe. Marzipan is so good. I know, right? The, do you ever have the little, like, um, uh, oh, what are they? They come in, like, a little red square package, and it's, like, chocolate with marzipan. They have other ones that are, like, filled with, like, shortbread cookies and stuff. Um, my uh, grandma always gives me and my cousins a marzipan pig around Christmas time. Nice. Delicious. And uh, Ritter Sport. Oh, That's yeah. That's what yeah. I was thinking of, the little Ritter Sport. Those things are so good. Ritter Sport is, like, oh, so good. Delicious, yep. delicious chocolate, and they have so many flavors. Oh man, I could go. I could talk for days. Yep. <laughs> Tune in next time for the Ritter Sport podcast. <laughs> so, second, we could second opinion r- the different Ritter Sport varieties. Every flavor. Just because <laughs> you're having one piece of each kind to make would. Be you know, too much. Uh, the 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 roundup episodes really do well, so that could be a really good episode. Yeah. Hmm be pretty awesome and it would also sort of improve the average taste of that series <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's very true yeah speaking of taste uh we're going to deviate from apple to a different company that has none which is google who would like to volunteer to say this horrible product name who would who wants to volunteer ah google stadia it's like stadia. stadium but there are lots of them <laughs> or, or is it like st- uh, stevia and it's like sugar? I don't know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's like a it's like a cassava based sweetener that yes. uh, has a really ergonomically uncomfortable controller that <laughs> doesn't has a bunch of buttons and I don't know what they do. Which is not, to be fair, is not dissimilar from any other game console. But yeah. Well, like. Okay, so let's 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 begin with step back. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. Um, so earlier this week, uh, apparently it's the Game Developers Conference, and Google uh, doesn't usually attend such a thing, but they did this year, and they uh, announced their new product called Stadia. I guess what a terrible name. And basically, it is a a uh, 2019 take on what we've all seen many times before, which is a streaming game service. So not like Steam, instead of letting you download the games from a store and have them locally on your own machine, this would be a little bit different. It would actually stream the game's frames to you over the what they like to call the internet and uh, allow you to uh, sort of play the game without having really any meaty hardware at all. Uh, in fact, so unmeaty, it could be even just a Chromecast, and uh, that would be enough for it. Pretty wild. So so I, I know none of you are really gamers here. Nope, not really. I, I think Brian's seen a game once or twice. I've played a few in my day. Yeah. Um, so what, what do you guys think about this strange announcement and or product from Google? Like, it is... It's weird. It definitely is. I think uh, it makes a lot of sense for Google because a lot of their um, uh, a lot of their expertise is in running really fast stuff on their servers. Um, and if they have a platform like this, I guess it kind of makes sense that this would be the form it takes. Um, but as far as like whether that actually leads to See, see, I guess the, the thing that keeps coming up in my head is, like, Twitch has eaten everybody's lunch on this. They were the first one. They're owned by Amazon now. Um, they have, as far as I can tell, they're, they're kind of far and away the best-in-class uh, streaming offering for stuff like this. Um, but, you know, they, they don't have a story around, like, hosting games. But a lot right. of other companies do. 
and I guess like that Google is kind of building something for this kind of that like that that seems like it kind of sets itself up really well to kind of either complement or I would say more likely eventually take over or attempt to take over the kind of market share that, that Twitch has um, is kind of odd. I don't see this so much as competing with Twitch as like PlayStation Pro or uh, plus sure. what, what's there's PlayStation has the service where you can pay per month and you can yeah. access to this whole library and you can stream these games that you don't own but are being run on a Sony server somewhere. I think that's more what it is, less of live streaming you playing a game, which is more what Twitch does. Mm-hmm. Oh, but I guess what I'm trying to say is, like, I could I could see this morphing into that eventually. Be- because, because of how it's all in Google. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I would be surprised if they didn't support YouTube streaming yeah. of, of these, you know, and they could probably stream it from the server itself so your, your client device doesn't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Yep, but um, yeah, they're, that's looks like they're targeting at 4K at 60 frames per second in about 30 megabits per second. At yeah, launch. we'll right. see about that. Well, yeah, we'll see. Um, they their implementation now is about um, 20 megabit per second for 1080p at 60, which still a lot of bandwidth. So, I don't know. That's so a lot of power I, that they need to use. I know that uh, I know that you have USI, right? And what, what what about you, Brandon? Uh, Comcast. Comcast at what speed? Uh, 100 meg on a good day, 120 yeah, so, on a really good day, 80 on a normal day. So all of you are living in the future relative to me in St. Paul, the capital city of Minnesota in the United States of America, where I have a mere 12 up, I mean 12 down. Um, uh-huh. And I, I, uh, I failed to see how this will get, um, work. Yep. I don't know. It, I would be I will be very impressed in the future with this. There are like six asterisks next to this product, so yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so uh, during the event, I was busy working, and so but I also was kind of following the the tweets that were coming from The Verge and Polygon and right. places, and you know I I thought of you know a visionary name for this product and. This is why Google just has no taste and you know and so on. But it is because this could have been called Google Play and it might have made sense. Right. Uh, uh and as you might know or 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 not, Google Play is the store that you buy games and apps in. Yeah, they kind of burnt that bridge. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um and so Matt and I were talking about this, although not on a podcast because that would have made way too much sense. Uh, we sort of noticed that Google made uh, a couple of – like they made their own uh, game production studio company called Stadia something. So Stadia is the product. Stadia is a company under Google, and that name is so generically fake that it almost feels like Google is in some ways prepared to let this thing go if it doesn't work right. out. Um. And and it sort of in Google's history with these kinds of things, I don't know. It doesn't for me. It doesn't bode well. Right. Um, I was watching the the like technical summary presentation though, and some of the tech is really cool. So they have they have a bunch of additional tech you can use in a quote Stadia game, and right. you can you can have on demand texture changes. And it was really cool because you could have, uh, like, you could map a piece of artwork directly onto the game surface, and I thought that was really interesting. Like, there's no useful purpose in that, but you know, it seems pretty cool that you can do that. And uh, I think some of the tech is the more interesting part. I hope that in the future, um, for example, in two years when Google says, "No, we don't want that anymore," I hope that some of the tech that powers this sort of goes open source in a way absolutely i i hope so too yeah okay we'll have to see well we'll have to play uh hey. the betting game of whether google keeps this product or not <laughs> sounds about right well i think it's about that time uh where we talk through our new twitter followies is that right twitter followies yep. yes it is it is that time 
I actually didn't follow a ton of people, so for me, it might go pretty quick. The first is Open Source North, uh, twitter.com slash open source north, uh, which is a conference. Yeah, it's a conference that I think we've discussed on this show a number of times. Um, I'm actually going to be speaking there, so that'll be kind of fun. Uh, and uh, it's, it should be it should be pretty pretty neat. So uh, they actually already sold uh, out, so there are no more tickets available at this time. Um, yeah, but uh, so can it's, we mention it's be that? A cool event. So last year it sold out in three weeks, which was <laughs> at the time we thought, wow, that's so fast. It actually sold out during the JSMN where they were trying to give away a ticket. Yes, that's I right. saw that. Yeah. I remember that. That's why I didn't get to go. <laughs> I oh, couldn't no. win. <laughs> but this year, it sold out in a record three days. Yeah. So, Pretty wild. Uh, uh, and, and so for th- those that don't know, we talked about this extensively in The Fringe, which you should listen to. And we all, the three of us, really love Open Source North among the conferences that are hosted locally. This has a ton of variety and... Um, a ton of great speakers. So it's uh, a good one to go. Although you can't go now if you didn't get a ticket already. So uh, go next year, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Go go next year. Um, It's, it's, it's really is a great conference and it's run by some awesome people locally. Um, They do a really good job. So yeah. Couldn't, couldn't recommend it enough. Totally. Next on the list is uh, Koyani Scotsy, which is a Twitter account that, um, that tweets uh, basically descriptions of the of the documentary film Koyana Skatsi, uh, which is a really really interesting kind of movie. Um, that the entire the entirety of the movie is uh, Philip Glass uh, scored, um, basically vignettes of like modern life. Uh, ap- apparently, it's a it's a word from a. Uh, from the Hopi language, uh, indigenous to the to the, I think the southwestern U.S., um, uh, that means like life life in turmoil or life out of balance. So it kind of has all all of these kind of vignettes of like um, modern life, uh, kind of aimed at like uh, you know examining why uh, like what why we why we're where we are right and this is from like the 70s or 80s or something but it's it's really an interesting movie and they tweeted at me for some reason because i mentioned the movie uh and it's b- rapidly becoming one of my favorite accounts on twitter um because it just is so um out of context it's also a really great movie so um definitely definitely recommending that uh next up is seth m larson uh who is a uh He's actually a, a Python developer uh, here in Minneapolis, um, and he's a maintainer for URL lib three, uh, which I didn't I didn't realize we had a URL lib three maintainer here in town. Uh, I'm trying to remember how uh, we started talking on Twitter, but I think it had something to do with like the quarry target, which is one of my favorite subjects to tweet about. Um, but uh, he's a really cool uh, individual, and uh, it's uh, always cool to run into more. Python people and more open source maintainers in town here, so uh, it's pretty pretty awesome. Totally. Uh, how about you, Brian? Who'd you follow? Uh, well, I I also followed Open Source North this year. Um, I have five names here because I couldn't decide which ones. That's the okay. First Sorry. is um, Brian Tarlson. He's a TypeScript person. We great. I I I was looking for more TypeScript like focused accounts, and he is a great follow couldn't recommend him enough um yeah i like typescript next we have tanner lin uh lin lindsley who is um, big in the react world he is the creator of react static js and react table um yeah i use react table so i'd like to keep an eye on what he's up to as well as see what his thoughts are uh next up is um you you see Zeng, she's the React uh, or the engineering manager of React and Relay at Facebook. Cool. So after that, sorry, I'm on number four here. Um, Matt uh, Zabrinsky, who is a software engineer at Apple and a core organizer of React Rally and React JS Conf. Um, so yeah, more React people. Yeah, you can see a theme here lately. 
how to react. He also he also built uh, Axios, which is a common right, yeah, uh, yeah, HTTP yeah. request library uh, that I'm a big fan of. I use Axios in basically everything I do. Same. I use it every day. Yeah, yeah. I use Axios all the time. Sweet. Yeah, I forgot about that. Good call out. And finally, um, uh, Amy uh, Gebhardt, um, who is a lead front-end engineer at Sports Engine, sorry, gave a talk on code reviews at DevOps Minneapolis last Tuesday. Great talk. She's giving it again at Open Source North. So if you're going to that, I couldn't recommend it enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, Amy is magnificent. Um, I didn't get a chance to see her at um, uh, the DevOps meetup this time, but I'm really bummed that I missed it um, because, uh, A, I've heard awesome things about that talk, but B, I, I know she's an awesome speaker. So it's good to hear that she's going to give it at Open Source North because I might have a chance to actually attend, assuming we're not uh, co-scheduled or whatever the term is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How about you, Ryan? You actually have Twitter followers this time. I did, I wow. did actually have Twitter followers. I'll go a little bit out of order here so we can keep the React team going. So first, I followed Andrew Clark, who's one of the uh, React core developers at the Facebook. Uh, I follow Dan, so I should follow Andrew, turns out. Uh, one of his recent tweets was, um, at his first uh, technical interview... Um, at, uh, at as a phone screen at Airbnb in 2015, they gave him a jQuery exercise, which he failed because who uses who uses jQuery in 2015? The answer is nobody. So of course nobody would know the answer. Hmm. Uh, that was funny. Yeah. And then I also followed uh, Mark. Don't know how to say that last name. Dalgalish. Why not? And he is a. CSS modules co-creator, and um, he does stuff at a place called Seek Jobs. I don't know, cool stuff. Um, He's also the like front end meme lord. I was gonna say, I, I know him from all of his uh, magnificent, uh, magnificent memes about uh, web development. Um, pretty, pretty self aware. I feel like, <laughs> especially with with respect to this. CSS and JS and CSS modules kind of discussions that are happening everywhere all the time. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, I followed uh, an account here called Sarah Codes or Sarah's Code, and it is Sarah Katz, and uh, she is a front end developer in the New York area. And I stumbled upon her blog talking about her experience at HackerX, which was a parallel to uh, our favorite podcast in Bootcamp with Matthew Petchel. Uh, and uh, that was a fun thing to read, and so I follow her on Twitter now. Nice, sweet. It's a solid cop, uh, crop of uh, Twitter followers. That's awesome. Yes, it is bigger than ever. I I actually went through and unfollowed like twenty accounts. Oh boy! One morning, it was mostly like stale accounts from Joe Breaking Times. So it doesn't re- didn't really change the amount of traffic in my feed, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm still uh, so, following like four thousand people, so there's no there's no hope for me. <laughs> no hope, none whatsoever. Especially nope. because every other week it's another two hundred people. Right. Yeah. So what are you guys doing uh, until next time? Uh, mostly work. I'm going to be working a lot. Uh, one of my main clients has a, a number of uh, kind of milestones coming up over the next couple months. So there's going to be lots of that, lots of reacting to feedback. Uh, and that, that'll, that'll be good stuff, uh, prepping for open source North, uh, and generally, uh, just, uh, going, ar- going around town. Uh, I guess some other things, JavaScript MN is coming up next week. Um, we're changing up the location a little bit for that. So it's going to be at WeWork in Uptown in Brian's hood. Uh, it'll be, it'll be good yeah. stuff. Um, uh, it's, it's going to be awesome. Brian's going to be giving a talk, but I don't know why I'm doing Brian's next time section for him. Uh, so I'll let, I'll let him talk about that further. Uh, and then I'm also helping to start up a serverless meetup in town. Nice. Uh, we got we got the domain name serverless.mn. Oh uh, wow, that's great. We also got the domain name serverlessmn.com because if there's one thing I've learned from JavaScript MN is that you need both. Even though we yeah. don't have JavaScript.mn anymore, it ran away. It, it, we lost it. Oh well. Um, but that that'll be cool. So stay tuned for uh, all of that stuff. Other than that, you can catch me at all of the coffee shops all the time um, because uh, I need coffee badly. How about you, Brian? You can find me giving a lightning-ish talk on TypeScript and React next Wednesday, 
or this coming Wednesday at we work at JavaScript Minnesota. Uh, I still need to do a lot of work on that, but uh, yeah, that's coming up. Let's see. I'll nice. be what's coming up. I'm going to be biking a lot this afternoon included. So that'll be nice because the weather is great. Yes. Yeah, I, I have to fix my road bike up, uh, but I'm going to try to get a longish ride in tomorrow to the degree that I can. Yeah, it's it's springtime. F- 55 degrees. Springtime in the Twin Cities is pretty nice. Yeah, and like we're all we're all kind of like uh, ready. We're all, we're all kind of like extremely ready for it. So like today, it was probably too cold to just like go out in a sweatshirt. But when I went out for coffee uh, today, I uh, I basically uh, I, I just like went out in a sweatshirt and 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 jeans because like it's not it's not every day in Minnesota that you get to just like walk outside in a sweatshirt and jeans and be cool with it. Um, even if it's very, very cold outside, <laughs> still, you know, still like 30 or 40 degrees out, which is not, not warm enough to do that. It's like, well, I'm ready. You can go outside without gloves. Exactly. That's, that's, the, that's the, that's the winner. And I'm going to go for a run this afternoon too. And it's going to be magnificent. First outdoor run in some time. That's going to be good. Uh, let's see. What am I doing? Uh, I've got work stuff. Uh, I'm going to JavaScript Minnesota to listen to, uh, Brian's talk. And in addition to our good friend Zach's talk, uh, what is Zach doing? Um, something about packaging uh, your first package. Yeah, making your own node module. Yep. Yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, it's gonna and be then, awesome. Uh, uh, pres- presumably, we'll record again until before the end of May. But if not, I'm going to open source North. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't have any big plans, but uh, that's kind of the deal. Nice. Uh, I guess I'll start where uh, where you can find us on the internet. Uh, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially at Twitter and Ryan Amar and on my website, RyanRampersed.com. You can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L or my website, BrianM.me. If you're into like, music or electronic music, I posted a new post there a couple weeks ago about the music that I'm into and some background with it and playlists and stuff. So if that's your thing, check it out. Nice. You've always got the best tunes, Brian, so I'll, I'll have to check that out for sure. Um, you can find me a lot of places, uh, but for the most part, uh, on Twitter, where I'm Brandon underscore MN, uh, where I mostly tweet about uh, random ideas for tech meetups I have. Um, that seems to be most of my content nowadays. Uh, or on Instagram, where I'm also Brandon underscore MN, where I, tweet, uh, where I post about uh, bread that I'm making. Um, that was so some lot, good-looking bread, bread the there. other day. I, I'm really happy with how that turned out, and I'm going to make some more this weekend with any luck. Nice. Uh, it should be should be pretty awesome. Uh, but other than that, uh, just like I mentioned before, uh, I'll probably be at a coffee shop or seven. Or seven. Or seven. Well, uh, speaking of coffee, coffee shops, uh, while you're getting coffee, you can check out the show notes for this episode at the nexus.tv slash PK47. You can leave comments for us and send us feedback at reddit.com slash r slash the nexus TV. And when you're done checking out in line and you notice that you have a couple of extra dollars uh, because your coffee was not expensive enough, you can support us on patreon.com slash the nexus TV. Nice. Well, I love when that happens when you find some, some some spare dollars that that aren't for coffee. Yes, I agree. It's always a good thing. You guys have dollars <laughs> that you don't spend on coffee. What? I do. Lots of dollars, in fact. Uh, it's like that drill tweet. Uh, coffee, ten million dollars. H- help me budget this, please. My family is dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, too okay, real. Then. Alrighty. Well. Have a good one. Thanks for that great episode, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Have a good one. See you next time. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from from the the Technological technological Convergence. Convergence.